Have you noticed a roof leak in your attic similar to this? In this video, I will show you how to fix this type of roof leak from start to finish. You will learn how to replace the plywood, the underlayment, the shingles, the pipe boot flashing, just as good as any roofing professional out there. By the end of this video, you will also know exactly what materials and tools you'll need for this job. If you've seen our previous videos, you know that we cover absolutely everything step by step and this video is no exception. But before we start on the actual roof repair, I'd like to show you why these roof leaks happen and why they are so common and what you can do to prevent this from happening to the other PVC pipes on your roof. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so here's our, our work area. And in a bit, I promise you that we will start to uh, rip apart the shingles and the plywood and all. But first, before we do that, I want to show you guys the reason why this is leaking here. Now, the one on the left is the reason that we're here. This is the one that's leaking. The one on the right is not. And I want you to compare the two side by side because this is a perfect example what do you notice here the one on the right is completely covered on the vertical edge with the shingles which is perfect the one on the left has a bit of exposure here on the vertical edge now neither one of these are installed incorrectly sometimes the shingles line up this way or the plumbers put the pipe in 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 a certain direction where you have to have some exposure that's perfectly fine but the problem here guys is that these nails on the vertical edge are too close to the vertical edge guys these nails should be closer to the center because what happens is that when it rains the water comes down from the shingles here and get in between the flashing and the shingles and find its way straight into that very first nail there. Now you may say, well, the nail head, it's got seal. Why is it leaking? Well, that may have some seal, but the puncture, the nail that actually punctured the pointy tip of the nail, that was not sealed. So what's going to happen is that when it rains, the water is going to come in through in between the two and find its way into that puncture and create a small drip, a constant little small drip. And then that nail on the edge, is going to eventually back up and pop up and leave you with an exposed opening to where now every time that it rains, the water is just gonna go straight in there. Now, if you install the nails closer to the center, guys, this is what's going to happen. The water's still going to come in through the uh, vertical edge but now the water has to travel very very far to get to the center but with, but with the slope and the pitch of the roof this makes the water speed up by the time it comes close to reaching a center puncture the water would have already passed and escaped the bottom horizontal edge of the flashing which in turn is going to leave you with a leak free roof so always remember two things one, if you have to have flashing exposure, make sure not to install your fasteners too close to the vertical edges. And two, use screws instead of nails in the bottom horizontal flashing, which I'll show you later on in this video. All right, e enough of me talking, guys. Let's get started. Step number one, using your flat bar, begin pulling nails from your work area. When you start pulling nails, you always want to start three rows above the needed area. For example, here we are replacing rows one and two, but we're leaving row three. But to remove row number two, you have to also remove the nails from row number three because those nails are holding the shingles in row number two. So it's always important to go one row above the needed work area and remove those nails too. In this step, you can never remove too many nails from your work area because the more nails you pull out, the easier the shingles will come off. Step 
Pro tip, if you can, try removing every nail at least one foot around the perimeter of your work area. This will make this project just that much easier. When using your flat bar and removing the nails, especially on the left and the right vertical sides of your work area, be very, very careful. You don't want to have to damage the existing shingles outside of your work area because this is only going to give you extra work in having to repair unnecessary shingles. Pro tip, before you consider this roof repair or any roof repair for that matter, make sure you double check the weather forecast. Here we will be completely opening up the roof. The last thing you want is a rainstorm while working on this project. Rain and an open roof are not a good outcome. Give yourself plenty of time a project of this size can take three to four hours depending on your abilities. Pro tip. Stepping on these nails could puncture the shingles, which in turn could cause a, a roof leak. It's always important to remove them from your work area. Step number two, using your hook blade, cut the needed shingle tabs from your work area. When doing this, make sure you cut the tabs as straight as possible from top to bottom. Since we have already removed the nails in the previous step, this step should be very easy to do. If your roof has a dimensional shingle, the same rules apply. Just make sure your cuts are in a 5 to 6 inch scattered pattern, similar to what you see us doing here now. Before we move on to the next step, I'd like to first thank you very much for your support. You still being here and watching for this amount of time lets me know that obviously you are finding value in our videos. And for that, I'm very, very grateful. This channel is not about selling, it's about helping. We like to help homeowners fix their own roofs and not have to overpay a, a roofing company that may not even know what they're doing. Heck, who knows, they may even be using this video as a, a reference too. We are all on the same boat, guys, and we all have to learn to help each other out in any way possible, even if it's by a simple roofing how-to video. A dollar saved is a dollar earned. Please remember, to hit that like and subscribe button for more roofing how-to videos. Thank you very much for your support. Uh, here is an example of what water does to your plywood. Once your plywood starts to see water, it will more than likely begin to damage very fast. Plywood is not like your wood fence outside. Yes, they are both made out of wood, but your fence sees the sunlight quite often and eventually dries up. Plywood, on the other hand, is in constant shade in a shaded area, wood takes a very long time to dry. Step number three, begin removing the roofing underlayment from your work area. For this step, your plywood has to be fully exposed. Pro tip, the underlayment will come off a lot easier if you remove every single fastener that's holding it, including any roofing nails that were left from the previous step. Once you've gotten all the nails and fasteners off of your underlayment, simply use your hook blade to cut the underlayment from your work area. Step number four, using your claw bar, remove all framing nails or staples used to hold down the existing plywood from your work area. The framing nails will be located over the rafters. This will also give you a good idea of where your cuts will be taking place in the upcoming step. Pro tip, it's important to double check your work area and that there are no framing nails left behind before you begin your plywood cut. Your saw blade will thank you and will save you from damaging your blade. Step five. Chalk mark your work area. Because we pulled out the framing nails in the previous step, you now have somewhat of an idea where to locate the rafters. What you see me doing here 
is I am making a small horizontal cut above the pulled frame nail areas perpendicular to the rafters. A small cut just big enough to show me the exact width of the rafters. You always want to make your vertical marks as close to the center of the rafters as possible. Always remember that the surrounding plywood still needs to be supported. So don't take support from it. You want the existing plywood and the new plywood to split equal support 50-50. Remember, the vertical cuts have to be as close to the center as possible. The top and the bottom horizontal cuts don't have any rafters, so those don't necessarily have to be centered. Just do your best with getting as close to a 90 degree angle as possible. A speed or a framing square could help you make your horizontal cuts exact. To get a straight 90 degree horizontal cut, simply um, if it's let's say for example 24 inches long on the vertical cut simply do 24 inches long on the other vertical cut and uh, get your measurement from there and there you go pop your horizontal line Also, I noticed how I used a, a roofing nail to hold one end of my chalk line. Um, you don't necessarily need two people, um, but if you know if if you have that luxury of someone helping you, then then this would be a good time to have someone hold the other end of your chalk line. But if you don't, uh, it's perfectly fine. Uh, just use a nail and uh, use that to hold your chalk line. Step number six, use your circular saw and make your four cuts. This step should be easy because in step five, we marked it with the chalk line. So simply now, just cut out your marks. Pro tip, make sure your saw is gauged just deep enough to cut the thickness of your plywood. You want to avoid cutting too deep into the rafters. Avoid any electrical wires, ducts, or any other lines beneath the plywood decking. It's very important you inspect your attic work area for any obstacles before making any cuts. Most plywood decking is roughly half inch to three quarter inch thick. Make sure you adjust your saw accordingly to your needed depth. Also, remember not to stand above the work area when you're making these cuts with your skill saw because you're actually weakening the plywood. So stay off of it while you're making the cut. You don't want to fall through the roof. In a bit, we will reinstall the plywood and then you're welcome to stand back on that area. Step number seven, install new plywood. Once you have your measurements, write them down on a sheet of paper or on your phone and take your measurements down to the floor to make your cut. Safety first guys, most common mistake I see roofers make is they bring the plywood up on the roof and make the cuts up there. I've learned that gravity always wins, no matter how strong you think you are. So make it safe on yourself and cut on the ground. Don't let your pride get the better of you. It can get dangerous. The image you're seeing now is something that I want you to either take a screenshot of or remember because it's very important. When making your cut, no matter what size width, 24, 48, or 72 inches. Always make your eight foot width side perpendicular to the rafters. This way you can get the full strength of the plywood, like the green example. I've seen so many people, even roofers, cut their plywood alongside the rafters and then wonder why it feels weak. Avoid cutting your plywood like the red example. 
If your plywood comes with pre-painted lines, use those lines as a reference because those lines are there to let you know the direction of the rafters. Pro tip, once you confirm your plywood fits, if you have plywood clips, now is a good time to use them. If you don't, it's not a big deal. Your patch will be perfectly fine without them. This plywood patch has a hole in it for the PVC cutout. For those of you who aren't as experienced, if you're able to, use the old plywood to trace over the new plywood to get your hole location and exact size cutout. This way you are 100% sure that it's going to fit and you're not having to go up and down to repeat the same cut. Step number eight, use your framing nails and begin nailing your plywood to the rafters. You can also use wood screws if you prefer. I am using two and a half inch ring shank nails, which in my opinion work better than screws for two reasons. One, they are not as thick in diameter and do not split the wood as much as a screw does. And two, they do not back up. But I will leave this choice up to you and use whatever you feel more comfortable with. Pro tip, reinstall nails to the plywood around your work area because remember, we pulled out framing nails in the previous step and weakened the surrounding areas. So now it's our job to reinforce these areas. We don't want to fix one area only to damage another. Always reinforce the surrounding plywood areas. It's very important. Step number nine, install your underlayment over your work area. There's two things here that I need you to remember. The first is to make sure that the underlayment is covering the entire plywood. You don't want to leave any exposed decking. If you have plastic caps, now would be a good time to use them to hold down the underlayment. If not, roofing nails or staples could work just fine. Second, install the underlayment under the top horizontal felt and over the bottom horizontal felt. This way, in case water gets past the shingles, the underlayment could serve its purpose and let the water properly escape. Remember, under the top, over the bottom. Step number 10, begin installing shingles over your work area. If you are still here, I really appreciate you. People like you are the reason why I do this is to help and to guide you through every roofing question or need possible. So I really appreciate you still be being here. Um, anything that I could do to make my next video e easier for you to understand, any comment that you could leave, uh, any criticism, anything that I could do to make these videos and, e and any future videos more helpful, I, I would appreciate that. So yeah, please let me know. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions or concerns. You could call, you could email. Um, I am very good with replying. So uh, yeah, let's continue this project and let's wrap it up. Thank you. Pro tip, when installing your shingles, make sure you use inch and a quarter roofing nails. Don't use framing nails and don't use screws. Use roofing nails here because a roofing nail has a bigger head and covers a little more space than any other nail. You always want to make sure that when you approach a PVC pipe, the tighter that the cuts are around the PVC, the less likely it will leak. Also, whenever you uh, start to fill in the shingles, um, say like we started here on the left and um, as you get to the right, uh, you, you, you're going to start to see the line of the shingles. If, if you notice that the line is starting to fall just a little bit or you're starting to lose the pattern, just use the existing shingles as your guide, as your line, so that way uh you, you don't do what we call a snake like where you're just curving you want to go straight
as you get close to the old uh, shingles, the ones that you are not going to replace, make sure that when you nail those down to not nail down in the same old holes from where you pulled the old nails from. You don't want to put your nail in that hole. Make a new hole. Find yourself a solid area and install the nail right there. Don't, don't go up. Don't go down. Just go left or right of that nail and place your brand new nail there. You want a solid area to nail the new nail to. Notice how I presented the flashing next to the PVC pipe before installing any nails or sealant. The reason why I did this is because I want to see if I need one more shingle tucked underneath the flashing or not. And since the bottom horizontal edge of the flashing went past the tar line by about two inches, that tells me that I still need one more shingle tucked underneath the flashing. But again, remember, just because it's tucked under and you don't see it, it doesn't mean that it's not important. You still have to make that cut snug and fit tight around that PVC pipe. Pro tip, notice how before I nailed down the pipe boot flashing, I cut one shingle completely in half and install it on both sides of the PVC pipe underneath the flashing. The reason why I am doing this is because it's serving me for two reasons. One, it's somewhat of a starter shingle. And two, and most importantly, it is serving me as a flashing extender. This way, the water now has to fight past my roof seal, which we will install shortly. But if it gets past my roof seal, then now it has to get past the flashing extender too. So pretty much the water has to fight a lot of obstacles before seeing a wood. Once you have your starter set, then you are ready to nail down the flashing. When nailing down the flashing, try to install the nails as close to the edges as possible. Hold off on the bottom horizontal edge. We are not there yet. For that step, we will put screws. So let's not nail down there. Let's just nail the area that's going to be covered. The video that is being linked now in the cards above is a full how-to video on roofing around a pipe boot flashing. In that video, I go a lot more into detail on how to roof around a flashing. So if you still have any other questions or concerns, about roofing around a flashing. That is a great video to watch. It's always good practice to keep a clean work area to pre-cut your shingles before installing your roof seal. That way you don't get tar all over the place and on your hands. Uh, it, it, it could be very messy. So pre-cut your shingles first before installing the seal. Uh, it's just going to be a lot cleaner for you. to pause this here because I want you to see this. Do you notice how my cuts around the pipe boot flashing are not too close to the lip to the rise? I like to leave about a quarter to half an inch apart from the shingle to that rise because over time the shingles begin to degranulate and if this cut is too flush to that rise, the gravel and the granules of the shingle 
will have no place to go and they'll get caught in that little lip area and cause the water to back up. But if the space is open and free and clear here, now what's going to happen is that when the gravel does meet this space, it's going to just wash out because there's nothing stopping it. There's no obstacles. Water always needs to find a way out. So let it go. Let it be free. Don't stop it. Make your cut just like this, about a quarter to half inch apart from that lip, and you'll be golden. Now that you have your cuts pre-made and you know exactly where they're going to go, go ahead and install your roof seal. When installing the roof seal, you don't want to install too much of it. Just a nice line above the perimeter as close to the edge as possible is just enough. Make sure to also install dabs of seal around those nail heads that you use to nail down the flashing. So just install above those nails and around the perimeter and you're set. Once you get past the pipe, continue filling in the needed shingles till you reach the top. Always remember to reinstall the nails that you pulled out in step number one. Inspect your entire work area for any nails that you might have missed. And if you did, make sure you reinstall those nails. Step number 12, apply your roof seal and your metal gasket screws along the bottom horizontal edge. When installing your roof seal, you have to go around your entire work area and install quarter size dabs of seal where the old and the new shingles meet on all four sides. You don't have to install too much seal, just small little dabs is perfect. This will keep the shingles from lifting. Make sure that you go around the entire work area and install quarter size dabs of seal everywhere. That will keep your work area from lifting in high winds. And also make sure to apply about quarter size dabs of roof seal over the old nail holes from where we pulled the old nails, nails from in step number one. So remember, small dabs of seal around the entire work area and small dabs of seal over the nail holes. So that way it doesn't leak and it doesn't lift. When you're ready to install your screws on the bottom horizontal edge, I like to lift up the flashing just a little bit to squeeze in some roof seal right underneath the area of where I'm going to install my screws. So that way, if the water does come in through the vertical edge, it has to one, travel far to the center and two, if it does get to the center, it has to fight that roof seal. 
Now you are ready to install your rubber gasket inch and a half screws. Install those two screws close to the center as possible, directly above the small dabs of seal that you applied when you lifted the flashing. Now this way, the screws are completely sealed All right, guys, we made it. We are all done. Again, thank you very much for watching this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. I hope that you found this video useful and helpful for your next roofing project. Have a good one, and I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you very much.